The original installer came here with a hammer and he was using hammer to crimp the cables. He was just knocking the hammers on the roof. We can see a lot of places are dented right here where he was using the hammer to crimp it. Oh, so they used the sticker to exactly. crimp it. Exactly, you can see the sticker. So the sticker is already peeling off. So you oh guys be way out there, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you guys be touch, touch this. This is extremely very hot. Yeah, I think it's way hot. too much, way too much amperage, man. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Home Tour Series. How you guys doing? You're welcome. We are the Atlantic View Estate right here in Lecky for a troubleshoot. They say this system is really very troublesome and that's why we're here to exercise the demons. <laughs> that's what we're gonna do everybody. And this gentleman says, I've gotten in not more than four engineers to come in here and help me, but nobody seems to have an answer of what's going on with my system. I need some help because I need to move on with my life and move on to something else. Why? It's very stubborn. Let's check it out, fellows. This man is called Steven. He's the owner of this property and he's the one that is paying the bills. <laughs> and um, he's going to show us his system. How you doing, Steve? Yeah, not too bad yourself. How's what exactly going? is wrong with your system, man? Uh, well, I have a number of uh, problems with the system. You know, mind you, this system was put in a few years ago and uh, we've expanded the system over the years. So there's communication errors, there's, um, you know, batteries charging at different rates, you know. Also there's rogue uh, voltage um, in the socket. So quite a number of um, issues okay. and problems. Let, let, let's know? see what the system looks like. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so this is where the system is. Quite a massive system that you got here, man. Thank you, sir. This yeah. is beautiful. You got one, two, three, four. These are all 17.5 kilowatt hour batteries. This is incredible. And then you have two systems, two 10 kilowatt um, systems of um, hybrid systems of Felicity. So what exactly is wrong here? Um, as you can see, it's emitting error uh, 80. Error right? 80. Error 80. Okay. The monitoring port is not working on this particular um, you know, inverter. This one is working, you know. Absolutely. I actually, um, requested for a 120 amp uh, charge controller, but I was given 100 amps. Oh, so they use the sticker to exactly. You can see the sticker. So the sticker is, is already peeling off. So you oh guys beware goodness. out there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys beware. So you know? this is actually a 100 amp um, charge controller, but it was upgraded with a sticker here. Uh, this is pretty much one of the things we always see on site all the time. But uh, tell us more about the situations that you have around yeah, here. Yeah, sure. So all the sockets. Um, even when they switched off, you still have voltage in the sockets, you know, okay. so that's a, that's a big problem as well. And I've had problems with my computer, I had to change the system board, my laptop as well. Okay. So that rogue, you know, um, that rogue voltage is, is a big problem. You it's know. a challenge for you. Yeah, it's a challenge, you know, and um, so there's quite a number of, um, also I've got 36, 670 watts panels okay, on the roof. 670. 36 of those, yeah. 36 of those, And, okay. um, you know, a couple of the panels, I don't think they're working properly. So, um, Smiling Sun here is going to come in and, you know, uh, look at my configuration and setup to make, make sure it's all optimal, you know. And I'm hoping today we can resolve all those issues. All issues. You know. Installation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the situation where a particular side of the roof is putting you at a disadvantage Understood. at some time in the day. Uh, if you're operating with this kind of tilted roof in the morning, you might have good sunshine. But once it's 12 one, the sun is going to move from that side of the roof of and course. then go to the other side of the roof. But this is incredible. This we is beautiful. This, side as well. this is this is not bad at all. And you have the combiner box over there. Okay, the combiner box is around here. Okay. Wow. Yeah, here's a key. This is really cool. So you the have over there. You had it painted uh, because of rust. Yeah, the ocean. Oh, okay. Very, very good job. So you have all the strings coming yeah, here. Yeah, all the strings coming in. All the strings are in so here. So we just need to check a couple of them. I'm not too so sure. So from what it is, um, yes, from sir. what you've just described, this is one, two, three, four. So you yeah. have um, um, nine panels on exactly. each of them. So exactly. So you have nine here, nine here, nine exactly. here, nine here. Exactly. six. So you have all of the strings coming in here. Exactly. The three of them. Yeah. Okay. Three strings in here. Three, 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 three. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, looks good to me, man. So let's get to work. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, 670 per, per 670, panel. but we're going to find out if it is 670. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to find check. out. Maybe that's where, we, that's where we need to start, man. Understood. And right here, they should have used the real um, uh, meat clamps. These are not supposed to be. You can see it's rusted. Rusted already because of the ocean. They are meant to use the meat clamps. L foot, N clamp, all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's what they're supposed to use. Understood. So it doesn't rust. Understood. 
Cool. But um, what's done is done. Understood. <laughs> and also, I think it's worth mentioning the famous coastal road you've heard so much about. Yeah, so the, coastal the, yeah that's that's the coastal road. That's the coastal road over there, guys. Can you, you guys so see about, the coastal yeah, road? That's the, road, man, that's the much talked about coastal talked road about, that this administration you know. is doing. Yeah. That's yeah. it over there. Looking so it passes through here. So if this exactly. gentleman is traveling, if he wants to go to Calabar, <laughs> he'll just drive into the road and he's on his way out. So it's an advantage for him. Understood. All right, Mr. Steven. Thank Thanks for having us. No worries, sir. Earth, because part of the complaints that he has around here is that you have voltage on the earth. So we're testing it right now to see if there's indeed voltage to the earth. Can you help me test this? I'll just hold the meter. So we read neutral to F and see if there's a voltage in there. Um, so you can see that we have 74 volts on the earth, uh, which shouldn't be. So we had to isolate the system to test it directly to ensure that uh, the problem is not from the inverter, but unfortunately the problem is from the inverter. Okay, so what that means is that this particular inverter was not internally bonded. We're going to do that and then make all the voltage that you have go all the way back to zero or at max five volts. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do now. So once we are done, we're going to test it again to see if what we did, we succeeded. So let's check the value that we have here. So you can see that the value has gone all the way to 0.2 volts. So what we have here is 0.2 volts. So we've taken care of that particular excess voltage of over 74 volts that you have on the voltage and in the system. That's been taken care of. But well, let's go ahead and do a test on the um, house itself to see if that reflects in the house. Okay, so we're testing it from the house wiring as well. You can see what we have from the house is 0.0 volts. Okay, so um, he also complains that even when the systems are switched off and uh, you turn off the powers from these sockets, there's still voltage in there. Let's test that one as well. So this is what we're getting for that, 1.4 volts. So everything pretty much is in check. So um, that issue is sorted. So we're going to move on to the next list of the items that they have in the things that needs to be sorted around here. Fuse is, I can barely hold this stuff, man. The fuse is burning up, man. Thank God that you have the boxes outside the house. This could be a potential fire hazard. This is extremely hot. This is handling more load than it's designed to do. This is incredible. This is crazy, man. So uh, we will need to change all of these fuses and put in the right ratings for the job that it's meant for. All right, so um, what we've discovered right here, cause here is excessively very, very hot. Like it is extremely hot. These boss bars are very, very, very hot. And what is causing most of these things are number one, this cable is undersized. This is a low voltage PV system. And low voltage PV systems, you can use anything less than 16 to 10 mm minimum. And the 10 mm has to be the original 10 mm. It has to be copper. So this 6 mm cable is not adequate for uh, a low voltage PV system. Because the low voltage PV systems, you have a lot of current that is traveling in here. It's a whole lot of electrons. And these cables will struggle to be able to allow this amount of current to pass through. And it's going to be forming resistance and it will be heating up. And when it's heating up, you're losing energy. And it's transferring the heat to the bus bar, to the fuse, everything. And this can potentially cause fire hazard. So this is wrong. And secondly, we also have to do the proper crimpings here. The original installer came here with a hammer. And he was using hammer to crimp the cables. He was just knocking the hammers on the roof. We can see a lot of places are dented right here where he was using the hammer to crimp it. You come with a crimping tool. A crimping tool would ensure that this is properly crimped. Can I have that crimping tool? Where is that crimping tool so that I can see what a crimping tool looks like? So you have both the hydraulic crimping tools and you also have automatic crimping tools. So these are hydraulic crimping tools. So this ensures that you promptly crimp the cables with a cable log. All right, because it has different sizes of the cable logs right here. So for instance, this is a 6 mm. So if you want to crimp a 6 mm, you have the 6 mm here. All you need to do is just add it right here on the crimper and it will crimp it tight. Because if you have a loose crimping cable on your wires, it will be heating up. It's a loose connection and loose connections causes sparks and spark causes fire. So it will keep heating up and it will keep transferring the heat right onto this bus bar. Okay, so these are the things we need to look into. Proper crimping, changing these cables to the proper sizings, and we are good to go. So the gentleman says that his solar panel is 670 watts, but he's saying he's not so sure. That is suspecting that it might not be up to that particular rating. 
all the declared um, wattage that we need to check it out to know exactly what is in here so that he knows what he's dealing with. So that's why we're here to check if this particular solar panel is the original. So stay close. The bolts are all rusting. They should have used the proper meat clamps on this. So from what we are seeing from the stickers, it looks quite okay. This is actually a 670 watt solar panel. It's a Canadian solar, but let's just uh, move a little bit further to do an output test on it and see if we can get the right readings. But from what we can see, in terms of the size, this is a 670 watt solar panel, so it checks out. So let's uh, run a bit of some quick tests right here to see if it tallies. Here you go, it, uh, it's running a scan on it, so it's pretty much going to test the output that it's bringing. Alright, so from what we are seeing here at this time of the morning, um, this is giving us this very much at the time of this morning, so I think the solar panel is actually the right ratings as was declared. Uh, by the previous installer. So there's actually nothing wrong here. Uh, we're getting 350 watts at the moment from the solar panel. And at this time of the morning, it's quite impressive. Yeah, so I had problem twice with this um, inverter. This inverter was actually bought at, um, you know, the Felicity headquarters. Okay, this one you got from Felicity office? Yes, definitely. But what about this one? Uh, this one is from my lava market. Oh, you got this from my lava market? Yeah, I got it from my lava market, oh, okay. man, you know. So what's been the challenge? So with twice this? they've had to replace the motherboard, the system board on it had an oh, issue when okay. I bought it. That's number one. And the second time, the charge controller had to be replaced as well. It was smelling. It was smelling. Oh. Yeah. So during the day, when the power, you know, the um, solar the solar panels are being, yeah. you know, uh, are charging, then you can smell the you can have you can smell it, you know. Okay. But at night when there's no solar issue, uh, there's no solar uh, power. There's no issues, you okay. know. So they took it away, it took a while, and um, they had to replace the, you know, chat, built-in charge controller. Okay. Yeah. And also the fan is running constantly. So there's okay, just the, been the endless fan. issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's just yeah. Um, a, a regular problem that they have with yeah. this 10K VA. Yeah. Uh, you just have the power, the fan, it just keeps running, and that drains mm -hmm. the battery. And it's okay mm -hmm. on the So this other, other one, one is fine. Yeah, no is issues, running. never had to do so anything. So I think this might still need to be taken back to the service yeah. center for them to do that. It's meant to yeah. have the a sensor so when the sensor senses that the temperature of the um, system is rising is meant to cool in normalizes the situation then brings down the temperature and then go off Correct. so it's designed that way for um, energy efficiency so that it doesn't keep draining Understood. your battery Understood. so once yes. we are done with this needs to be taken back for them to fix that sounds and good all that. then the error 80 that you're seeing has to do with uh, communication so many of the 10 kvas are not communicating no matter what you do even if you do the right thing mm. uh it will still be showing you the error 80 but if, if you want the error 80 to go off you put it to user okay if you put it to user it disappears okay straight up you want me to try it yeah if we can try it, <laughs> let's just try it so um you see now it's on lithium once you take it off lithium and put it to user you see that the 80 is going to disappear you see, the 80 is gone. Wow. Okay, so we're trying to integrate the MCCBs. We have one here, and then we have one here. This one is meant to control this particular inverter so that if you're doing maintenance, you just power down and everything is safe. Then you have the second one, which does the same thing to this particular inverter to be able to power down for your maintenance. It also adds as an additional protective layer for the batteries. All right, um, in addition to the one that comes with the battery that is connected to the battery as well. So we're trying to balance the outputs for the batteries to ensure that they all get to charge evenly. And this is what we need to do, remove the cables and then make sure that the sizings are all the same. Because what he said that at different times, he had to have different engineers come in um, to install the different batteries and they all came with different types of um, cables and length as well, which is resulting in a lot of differential chargings right here. So we want to balance up the cables, all right? So it doesn't really matter where the batteries are. It doesn't matter if it's very close to the bus bar. Every single battery that you have here connected in parallel must share the same equal length of cable. In that way, they'll have the same equal amount of resistance. The energy will get to travel the same length. All right, so what we're essentially doing right here is to balance the cables for the battery. So we have essentially four batteries right here that are connected in parallel. Okay, so if you don't have the cables right in the same length and precision, you're definitely going to notice differentials in the charging as the battery charges. 
and the gentleman who owns this property has expressed concern that it does seem like the batteries are charging um, differently. He's noticing a lot of differentials in the voltage and the current and they don't all seem to charge fully at the same time. So most times particular batteries will charge fully while the other ones are lagging behind. So one of the major culprits are on balanced cables. When you have cables at different lengths and they will have even and balanced charging, both discharging and charging as well. So that's what we're doing right here. All these cables must be of equal length. So since he has a lot of cables here, so what we did was to take the shortest cable here as a sample. Then we're gonna cut every single one of them to that same cable with the same precision so that none is at a disadvantage. Every single one of them gets to receive the energy at the same time. So that's essentially what we're doing right here. So we're about to check the strings that um, was connected here. So uh, the connection here is for a low voltage PV system. And the connections were done three in series, three in series, then all the cables were run to the bus bar uh, where you have all of them fused. So we're trying to check the configurations to ensure that everything is done properly to ensure that we have the right MC4 connectors uh, used for this particular deployment and ensure that there's no manual joining, that there's no reverse polarity, everything is in check. And then at the end of the day, that should be able to improve the energy um, yield down on the uh, systems, on the inverters that you have down there. Okay, so we are testing each of the strings individually to see if there's any defective one, okay, which is going to be the weak link and which is affecting the energy that you have done here. So what we've done here is to uh, disengage the fuse so that we can get to isolate every single one of them one after the other. And that way we'll be able to catch the culprit. He was sold the wrong um, amperage of charge controller it was meant to be given 120 amps charge controller, but they use the sticker here to upgrade it to 120. So if you're increasing the amperage, it's definitely gonna stop at 100, telling you that what you have here is 100. It's even heating up, it's pretty much hot. So we need to change this to 120 amps um, charge controller. That's why we have this procured. So this is procured. So we're gonna have this brought down and then use this to replace it so that's basically what we're going to do now it's heating up because it's handling more amperage that is meant to handle that's why it's heating up and that's pretty very pretty dangerous okay because this is not heating up but this is incredibly very hot touch touch this this is extremely very hot yeah, I think it's way hot. too much way too much amperage man way too much amperage is sent to this guy more than it can handle you know, it's excessive amperage and this is crazy. This is one of the things that have potentials of causing fire. You know, this is really wrong. All right, guys, so everything is pretty much done. All the concerns that we made on ground, everything pretty much is done. He says he's particularly not about how the system looks because we wanted to tear this down and then uh, rewire everything uh, a lot neater. But he's saying he's more concerned about the functionality of the system uh, that we can just best better leave it the way it is, but that he wants every other thing corrected, all the concerns that he's laid down on the table. And the system is working perfectly the way it's meant to work. All right, so it's been very, very tasking, but we've been able to sort out all the issues that he has. So you can hear from the horse's mouth. Are you happy with the job, man? <laughs> yeah, very, very happy. Thank you so much, you know. So everything is all been sorted out, you know, so I'm pretty happy. Uh, so do you still have voltage in your systems? Do you have a low oh, no, voltage? No, no, no voltage. It's all sorted, sorted out, right? Yeah, R80 cleared up. Okay. You know, so everything seems to be working fine, man. You okay. Know, very okay. happy. Thank yes, you sir. so much. Thank you. Reach out next when you have a problem, man. No worries. Thank you so We're much. We're hoping guys. it's not going to be here. Next yeah. time you call us, it's going to be an upgrade. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. All right, man. Cheers. All right, thank you so much, bro. All right, cheers, thank bro. You.